to the music scene. I'm your host, Stephanie DeGraw, and we're here at the Music Box at the Henry Ford Theater in downtown Hollywood. We're going to be talking to Avery Watts and his management team. Avery is a hot rock star. He's got a lot of projects going on, so come and join us right now on the music scene. The head of Avery's management team and president of Papillon Entertainment was kind enough to meet with me at the theater to give me a behind-the-scenes look. See you. So Thank we're here you. with my business partner, Lisa Miller, and she takes care of all the contract and logistics, and we're currently working on a new writer for Avery's production, so let's take a look. Yeah, trying to add a couple new things, elements into the program, and so part of what I do, and my job is to take Avery's vision and then turn that into something real. So from licensing and contracting and stage production, audiovisual, computer technology, there's so many different things to take what comes first as an idea and then actually becomes a performance that people can really enjoy. So that's what we're here taking care of. And we're back with the music scene. I'm your host, Stephanie DeGraw. We've been visiting with Avery Watts here, and he's going to take a moment out of his busy schedule and visit with us about some of the things he's got coming up. And before we get into all of that, Avery, let's start back at the beginning. I'm really curious about how you got this bug to be a rock star and, and where that all started. Well, I actually started out doing different things. I had a, I was really interested in writing at a young age. Uh, from there, pretty much got into I got into skateboarding, which got me kind of into filmmaking, which sort of put me in that crowd of I don't know if you call like underground people, like mm -hmm. you know extreme sports riders, things like that. And uh, I pretty much just came to the point where I just got a bug. Really, on my 18th birthday, my dad said, "Hey, what do you want to What do you want to get for your birthday?" And I said, "You know, I've always wanted to learn how to play guitar." Oh, right on. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and so he said, well, hey, we should go get one. So we went there it, just on a whim. Like, it might yeah. have just been one of those things where it lasted five minutes. And instead, I took the thing home, and I never put it down. You play a lot of other instruments. You could tell us some of the things that you play. Sure, yeah. Um, I play, I started off playing guitar, and then um, I actually, in the band that, the first band I started, there was a guitar player who I thought was a lot better than I was. So then I took up playing bass, and I completely just submerged myself in that world and then obviously I had guitar going at the same time I, I really just became completely intrigued with the whole process right so I ended up playing I ended up learning how to play everything uh, inadvertently you yes. know so I ended up playing so I can play guitar uh, bass drums keyboard piano um, you know, in the different styles of guitars too. I mean, mm -hmm. and playing electric guitar isn't like playing acoustic guitar. Right. Isn't isn't like playing slide guitar. So, um, throughout that process, also I learned how to record in the studio. I got to the point where I would start hearing things as whole ideas, and in the beginning, I didn't really have the tools to put it all together myself. And then later on, I, sort of just from the the band experience, I was able to kind of sponge knowledge from each type of player and each kind of situation so it ended up being a situation where later on I was able to do the whole thing myself and right. I just felt like it was easier that way. How did you come up with the whole idea of I want to do a rock album but I want to be positive? You know with music I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's, that's negative and there's a lot of things that are, um, that are dated. Right. You know, you write a song about being upset, well, inevitably, you stop being upset. Yes. You know, I mean, sooner or later, you stop being whatever angry or whatever you're angry at. And then if that song stays a hit, you have to keep singing about being angry for the next right. 15 years. So I try to take things, I try and take situations where maybe this is something that causes anger or is something that is frustrating. And what's the positive flip side to that? Where you can stay real, you know, and everything isn't isn't peaches and cream everything I mean this is the real world and we go through real trials and tribulations in what we do how do we put that into the context of something where we can come out better on the other side and be able to feel like that forever you know something that inspires people and is positive instead of complaining about what's wrong basically you started something called the takeover tell us about that the, the core of society are these people that are essentially they feel like they're faceless and voiceless in in a world where there are people that get attention and people that don't get attention. And 
I sort of look at the takeover as one of these things where there are so many great people out there that are making positive differences or have the potential to make positive differences in their lives and other people's lives that we need something, some kind of vehicle for those people to stand up and be able to do that, to be able to be that voice, be heard, and make a positive impact on the planet, you know, in the world that we live in. And so the takeover was kind of this metaphor for being able to come in and sort of overrun what's wrong, then have the action to be able to, to do and say what's right. You're very active on the social networking sites, and so people can actually, from what I've heard, um, go ahead and, and take a photograph of themselves with your album or one of your little, you know, special masks or whatever sure. you want to call it, and, and post it on the site, and then share with other people what they're doing to make the world a better place. And so it's very interactive. I can't count how many times someone has written me a message on something, on you know, MySpace or Facebook or something, and I write them back and they go, wow, I can't believe you wrote me back. You know, because I thought this is just something that you're, whatever, that your record label or your management yeah. ran or something like that. So just the fact that you wrote me back and even just said what's up meant everything to me. So, and to me, that's what it's about. Like I was saying previously, it's really, it's for, it's for the people. Even if you notice in the sound of the music, there's a, I mean, I use the crowd as an instrument. They're almost, they're in there almost all the time, like where I'm there with them and I feel the same way. And I, I'm not just some guy where I'm saying, hey, come, come check me out, I'm awesome. You know, exactly. it's, it's one of those things where I want to I wanna be there, I want to be in the crowd, I want to be with the people because I know coming from where I've come from and my, you know, just the, the trials I've gone through in life, there are lots of times when someone just needs that person. You know, right. they, need, they need just that one push, they need someone just to open the door for them and say, there's more. Yeah. You know, you can, you can do better, you can be anything you want to be. People want to be like you and, you know, pursue their music careers. What kind of tips would you give them from, you know, management on up to concert, touring, that kind of thing? Uh, I'd say the key thing for anybody out there, any artists or bands or anything that are looking to come up and make it is you have to stick by your guns. I mean, always. If you don't believe in yourself, you can't expect anybody else to. So it's one of those things where you have to have your own, you have to have a clear sense of your vision and what you want to do and why you're doing it. And you need to know that because it's a rough road, you know, on a more specific level. If you want to be smart about it, you really need to look at it as, do you want to play music for fun, just being in the music business, or do you want to make a living off of it? And if you want to make a living off of it, it's one of those things where you really need to be an active part of the music business as well. You need to understand how it works, uh, you know, and if it's anything from contracts or licensing or right. how live performances work. And you've got a lot of backup, I noticed, from your team. That's True. Great. Oh, I have, I have the best team in the business, hands yeah. down. And the, the team is really important. You really need people that that see, that feel your vision like, like you do. When you have somebody that believes in what you're doing, representing you and talking to others and all of that, it's easy because they don't have to... They don't have to look at you and go, what's my line again? <laughs> you know? <laughs> they know exactly yeah. what to say already because they, they're they essentially um, creating deals and networking opportunities for something that, that they stand for as much as you stand for. Exactly. And I, I noticed that you, um, through your team and everything, have been able to take your career beyond what a regular person would expect. A regular person would say, okay, rock star, he makes music. Tell us some of the things that you're involved in. Well, I mean, we, we just look, we simply look for uh, opportunities that are applicable and that are smart. You know, we ended up striking a huge deal with ESPN and that just was like a match in heaven because it's, the, the musical styling is high energy, it's aggressive, and it has this really motivational message, which athletes always need. Awesome. Any other words of wisdom you want to share before we wrap up? Um... Go to AveryWatts.com, pick up the Takeover EP, out that's, now. That's right. LP coming soon, stay tuned, drop me a line, say hi, keep in touch. Thanks so much, Avery. Sure, sure. appreciate your time. Definitely. You've been watching the music scene. I'm Stephanie DeGroff.